God, we thank you so much. Let's just give it up for Jesus right now. It's so good. So good. Now, Father, we just thank you for this moment where we get to gather as a church. God, we thank you for this moment where we get to come together and celebrate you, celebrate community, celebrate what the church is about, which is about you and about community. And God, I just thank you for everyone here in our parking lot watching today. I pray for everyone who's, who's watching us online, God, right now. I just pray you meet us where we are. And God, I just thank you that in the midst of so much chaos, God, you are our hope. You are a hope like no other. And God, I thank you for that hope. And God, I pray that we stay focused on that hope. We stay focused on, on you and what you're doing in our lives. And God, I just thank you that you're so good. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So good, man. I'm excited today for drive-in church. It's going to be so good. You know, the last two weeks, we've been missing you guys so much. You know, it was just, you know, our team in a room, and I was, and I was speaking to a few people. And I'm just excited today that I get to see your faces, I get to see your cars, I get to see your smiles. Because even when you're in your car, you don't even have to wear a mask, which is beautiful, because it's your car. So I'm excited y'all are here today. Let's give it up for Martin, too, for leading us in worship. Yeah. So good. Let's also give it up for our team who put on this service today. Let's give it up for our team. Yeah. Man, this is, this is exciting. This might be the most excited I've ever been for something for a long time. Because this year there hasn't been like too much exciting going on, but this is exciting to me. We're in our parking lot. And man, I'm just excited. It's going to be beautiful. Again, if you guys are new, you don't know me. My name's Dustin. Uh, and I'm the, the lead pastor here at Victory Church on the Rock. And we're so glad that you're joining us this morning, especially you guys joining us online. So excited um, that you are with us today. It's going to be a beautiful service. And uh, you know, over the past three weeks... Uh, during this lockdown, this, this like third or fourth lockdown, whatever we're on, uh, we've been going through this series on prayer. We've been talking about, about prayer and, and how amazing it is that we get to have connection to God. And, and basically, simply put, prayer is a conversation with Jesus. It's a conversation. It's us talking to Jesus. It's us listening to what He is saying. And I know for a lot of us, you know, prayer can be so challenging. You know, prayer can be so challenging. I mean, even this morning, I was sitting in my office, and, I, and usually I get here, you know, to church. I get here around 7 a.m. on Sunday so I can pray and make sure I'm all ready to go. But I was even struggling this morning praying because my mind was like, okay, how are people going to park? How is it going to sound? Uh, is it going to be good for our online service? Right? My mind is just thinking about so many things, and prayer can become so challenging. Even having a conversation with Jesus can be hard. And, and so, so I just want to encourage all of us today that, 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 that prayer is so vital to our relationship with Jesus. And sometimes it's hard. I'm going to tell you even right now, sometimes having a conversation with my wife is hard. There's moments where literally there's moments, this is true, where Beth's speaking, I'm looking, but I am not hearing. I don't know if anyone has, a, has had that happen. So, so I have ADHD, right? So when Beth speaks, there's literally times where I have to cut her off and say, Beth, Will you please restart? Because I am literally not hearing one thing that's coming out of your mouth right now. And, you know, talking and, and listening can be so challenging because our minds go everywhere. And so far we've focused on, you know, reading the Bible, praying through the Bible, as well as just thanking God for all he's done and telling him what we need. But today, you know, actually uh, Romans 12, verse 12, if you guys have your phones with you, you can pull it up. Uh, but it's Romans 12, verse 12. It says this. It says, rejoice in our confident hope. And we just sang about this confident hope. Our hope is found in him, not found in anything else. It says, rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. Keep on praying. You know, when chaos is around us, what do we do? We keep on praying. When, the, when life seems like we, we don't know where to go, we keep on praying. When praying is hard, we keep on praying. We just pray and pray and pray and we rejoice in the, our confident hope, which is not in anything except for him. That's where our confident hope is, is in him, not in anything this world has to offer. Because if we find our hope in what the world has to offer, I'm telling you, eventually hope will run out. Eventually our hope will run out unless we put it in the God who doesn't change. The God who is t the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. If we put our hope in him, that's when we're going to find peace. That's when we're going to find purpose. That's when we're going to find direction. Jesus is the one and our hope is found in him. And we can actually have a conversation with hope. Hope isn't just a thing. Hope is a person and that person is Jesus. 
We get to actually have a conversation with hope. We can find hope in him and talk to hope. We can be confident in him. We got to keep on praying, keep on praying. And today, what I want to focus on is listening. You know, so far what we've talked about over these past two weeks is we've talked about speaking. But a big part of relationship and a big part of conversation is actually listening. Listening to what God is saying. And I think for some of us, listening, like I talked about earlier, can be really, really, really challenging. And you know, Beth and I, you know, for a while, Beth lived here in Edmonton and I lived in Calgary. And so we were three hours distance when we met each other. And two times during our relationship that we actually spend six months apart at a time. So, when we, so just before we started dating, we spent six months apart. Beth was in Spain. I was, she was in Morocco. She was in Brazil. I was in cold Calgary. And the only way that we could communicate was by texting. So we, we grew a lot in our relationship by texting each other. By actually spending time in, you know, Facebook Messenger or iMessage. Actually texting. It was funny. A few months ago, I actually went through and read through some of our old conversations. We could probably write a love story about our conversations we had. And it would probably make like 20 bucks in the movies. Because it was so cheesy and so terrible and just like so, to be honest, like super cute actually. Beth and I, are, our relationship was super cute then. Now it's like real, you know. <laughs> it's like real. But this was the most of our relationship was actually just by texting each other. We, 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 grew, we grew close to each other by reading each other's words. And, you know, when, when I look at prayer, I think it's similar because what, what we do is we read through the Scripture, and that's how we get to know Jesus. But there's something different about hearing him speaking. You know, Beth and I's relationship grew deeper when we could have the same conversations we had while texting when we were in person with, with each other face to face. We grew closer and deeper in our, in our relationship the more that we spent time together in the same room. You know, we, when we read the Bible, we, we hear his voice. It's like reading an autobiography about Jesus. It's, about, it's like reading an autobiography. We get to know him. We get to know his character, but we don't actually know his voice. We don't, we don't actually, actually know, know what he's, what he's saying. saying. We, we don't, don't actually, actually understand, understand the words that are coming out of his mouth. And so what we need to do is not just read the scripture, but we also need to let him speak to us and listen to what he is saying. If we actually want to hear God's voice, super simple, we have to listen. We actually have to create space to listen. I think for, for me and for a lot of us, when we go maybe even through some devotional time when we're spending time with Jesus, we try and get our routine done. We say, I'm going to read this. I'm going to pray this. And then we go on with our day. We don't actually spend just even a few moments just listening to what God is speaking to you. You know, we try and, we try and just get through it rather than just creating space to listen and listen to what he is saying listen for a subtle knock listen to the correction that God speaks that he speaks so elegantly and gracefully you know when somebody corrects me sometimes it hurts when God corrects me I'm like wow I love you it's like super weird like God's like hey don't do this anymore I'm like of course when Beth says the same thing I'm like stop it disrespectful you know what I'm saying like and but when God speaks it it's like I feel so loved right now and it's just amazing. It's just so, so amazing. But there's this verse, Revelation 3.20. It says this, look, I stand at the door and knock. And if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. I have two thoughts today. Number one, my first thought is this, is that Jesus is knocking. Jesus is knocking. He's standing at the door. Now imagine with me, you're eating dinner one night, Wednesday night. It's like a hot day, kind of like today. It's like 20 degrees. You got the steaks on the grill. You're getting ready to eat, and 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 you got the you got the potatoes. They're they're looking delicious. The steak is is looking really nice, and the broccoli's like looking like okay. It's more so there because you have to eat it, right? The broccoli. But you have this meal, and you're about to sit down and eat, and all of a sudden there's a knock on the door, right? And when we we're like, oh no, knock on the door. So we go to the door, and it's like somebody who has this 30 minute speech prepared on like how you need to give money to their organization, right? Like, it's like, or they come in, it's like, hey, like, did you know about the, all these issues across the world? And you're like, I, I love that, the, the, like, I want to support this, but also, 
my tummy is grumbling. Like I'm hungry. The steak is smelling delicious. The potatoes, the broccoli is going to get in my mouth too. And, and so we're just like, and we're like, we don't want to deal with this. And we find that the knock on the door is actually a disturbance rather than a blessing. And I think it's the same with Jesus. Sometimes we think of him knocking at the door as a disturbance rather than a blessing. And when we see it as a disturbance, it's because what we're doing, we feel like is more important than having a conversation with him. You know, the knock on the door we see as a disturbance rather than a blessing. And I'm telling you, when Jesus is knocking, it's never a disturbance, it's a blessing. You know, Jesus needs to be our priority. No matter what we're doing, no matter what we're going through, he needs to be the one that we're letting into our home. He needs to be the one that we're sharing down, having a meal together. He says, I knock, and if you open the door, I will be there. And one thing I noticed this year even is I've had a lot less people knocking on my door. I don't know if y'all noticed that. COVID, like one blessing from COVID is less people are going door to door. So I get my peace, I get my steak, I get my, my, my potatoes, and it's, it's, it's awesome. But Jesus is knocking on the door. Jesus doesn't just barge in, right? Like Jesus doesn't just like kick the door down like a SWAT guy. He like, he like knocks at the door. He's patient. He's elegant. He's graceful. He's amazing. He allows us to answer the door if we choose. Jesus is always knocking. Jesus is speaking always. And it says this. It says, if ye hear my voice. This is implying that the issue is not him speaking. The issue is us listening. You know, Jesus is always speaking. But the problem, I think, for a lot of us is that we're not always listening. There's too much noise. There's too much going on. There's too much chaos. There's, we're so busy that we don't actually have time. We don't even sometimes hear the knock because of how busy, how loud it is, right? And sometimes it's mealtime. The kids are running around. It's loud. Sometimes you don't even hear the knock. You don't even hear the doorbell go. And we need to actually quiet everything around us and actually listen to his still, small voice. Maybe you've never heard God speak to you. Maybe you've never had a moment where you've actually heard God speaking. And you're sitting here and you're saying, hey, like, I wish I could hear him. I wish I, I could hear him speaking. And you feel like there's something wrong with you because you hear story after story of God speaking to other people. And you're sitting there saying, God, what about me? Why can't I hear you? Why can't I actually hear your voice? Everyone else is hearing you, but why can't I? Maybe that's a moment that you find yourself in. And recently in my life, I've been getting into like producing music, and I want to be completely honest, I am absolutely horrendous at it. And my brother, on the other hand, is incredible at it. He, like, he, he records bands all the time. He produces all this music. And when you think about music production and we think about, you know, hearing things, they say that, that some people just have the ear for it, right? They have the ear to know, like, what needs to be changed, what needs to be turned down, what needs to be brought down. And it takes time for these people, for these producers, for these sound engineers to actually get to a point where they're doing a good job because they actually start to get an ear for it. They actually start to... I hear what the, what, what's wrong. They start to hear it. And I think for a lot of us, we, we think that we're going to be able to just hear this audible, clear voice in a moment. But sometimes it takes time practicing hearing him speak. And sometimes it takes time to actually just sit down in the quiet, which for a lot of us is so awkward. Right? Like we don't like quiet. Like we, we need to have our music playing. When we go to sleep, we have a white noise machine on. And like there's always sound around us. Sometimes we need to just sit back and just listen create space for it again you're not going to be maybe excellent at hearing his voice right away but just sit there and create the space for it I think that's the first step for all of us is if you want to hear God speak create space just create space to take five minutes ten minutes out of your day and just sit there in the silence and say God speak to me God even just pray this prayer God I'm opening the door I hear you knocking I'm opening the door God what do you have to say to me today and even make that a daily practice in your life. Eventually, you will start to be able to differentiate the voices that you hear. You'll be able to hear his voice so clearly because you've become so tuned to it. I want to encourage all of you guys online, here in the parking lot today. Today, tomorrow. Tomorrow's the long weekend. Maybe you have tomorrow off. Take 10 minutes out of your day. Turn everything off. If, if, you, have, if you have kids, maybe like have a babysitter or something, go in your car and just spend some time in the quiet listening to what God is speaking to you.
You know, when we often hear God speaking, we hear it internally. We hear God speaking life into us. We hear him speaking love into us. We hear him speaking. And the interesting thing is God is not a God of shame. God is a God of love. And so a lot of us, when, when we, we, we were confused because we were hearing all this shame in our life, we're hearing all this, this guilt and we're hearing all this and we're saying like, I don't think that's God speaking. The interesting thing right here is, is Romans 8, 1 to 2 says this. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of life-giving spirit that has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. There is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. If you're hearing shame and, and guilt inside of you, that might not be God speaking to you. If you're feeling that God is encouraging you, if you're feeling like you're so encouraged, so loved, so valuable, God is speaking that to you. The, the voice of God is love. There's no condemnation. God's voice speaks life, not death. The voice of sin speaks death, speaks harm and discouragement. Jesus speaks life and love because we belong to him in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation. So when God's speaking, listen to the voice of encouragement, not the voice of shame. Listen to what he's encouraging you in. There is no condemnation because God is love, meaning that God's voice is love. God's voice creates, creates life, doesn't create death. His voice is a voice of hope. My thought number two today is this, is that Jesus speaks wisdom. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says this, Ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. Jesus always speaks wisdom. Jesus always speaks something, maybe that we don't even know exists yet. Maybe it's a business endeavor. Maybe it's a way to, to teach our kids. I, I don't know what he's spoken to you, but sometimes he speaks things into existence. You know, when I was in, I was in Thailand in, uh, I think it was 2013, maybe 2014. Before that, I was in Los Angeles with Youth of the Mission. And, and, and one thing that they got us to do, we were working with human trafficking. So they, they got us to write a letter. They said, hey, what I want you to do, our team, they said, write a letter to somebody right now who you believe um, is, is in, in some sort of human trafficking. Whether they're somebody who's stuck in the sex trade. Maybe, maybe it's somebody who's actually out there purchasing people. Uh, whatever it is, write a letter. So I wrote this letter and I wrote, I, wrote, I wrote John. I just wrote John. I wrote John and I wrote this letter to him. And I didn't really think anything of it. I, I tucked it away and I put it away and wrote this letter. And then we went to Thailand uh, like a month later. And I'm in Thailand. I'm sitting in this red light district, which is a, a place where, where, where like human trafficking takes place. People go in and they buy people for, for whatever reason. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm sitting at this, this bar. And me and this guy strike up this conversation. He's probably maybe like 50 or so years old. And we have this conversation. We're talking. We're talking. And I start to talk to him a little bit just about why we're there, like why, why we're in this place. Because we're obviously there for different reasons than most of these people. And, and he starts to share with me that, that a lot of, most of these, these people, these, these women, these men, uh, oftentimes underage, he was telling me that they, they, they're wanting to be in this situation. He was speaking this to me. He's saying, hey, like these girls they actually want to be here. This is like what they want to be doing with their life. And I remember I was just getting so angry because I was like, man, like this is a child of, of the most high God. Like this is a child of a king and you're saying they want to be a part of this? And, and so I got super angry. We're talking and I left. And then when I got back uh, to like our base, like, like later that night, um, I started sharing the story. And the interesting thing is this guy's name was John. And so I go home and I pull out this letter I pulled out this letter that I had written, I, be, I believe in my heart, I had written to him t t a month and a half earlier of encouragement and of love and of joy. And I remember, because I was so mad at this guy, but then I read this letter and all I was reading in this letter was like, hey, God speaking, saying, I love you. You are my child. You're, you're, you're just broken. You need me. And I was reading this and I wrote this and, and it got me thinking even this week as I was preparing this, this is that God will speak wisdom to us. God will speak things into existence that may have not existed ever before. And he's saying, hey, you can speak life into people because of what I've spoken to you. God, Jesus always speaks wisdom. 
We all have things that go on in our lives that are hard. We all have things that, that we don't know what to do with. And a lot of the time, we go to like WebMD and we try and figure out the diagnosis of what we're going through. We go to the internet rather than go to Jesus. When the, the internet, sometimes we view as more wise than our creator. But the reality is, is that Jesus, our creator God, is more, has more wisdom than the internet could ever provide. We need to go to him in those trying times. You know, sometimes he speaks through other people. I don't, know if, I don't know if you've ever had a moment where you just don't know what to do. Like, you're, you're, you're lost, lost, you're confused, you don't, you don't know, know what's going on. on. And, and then, then somebody, you have like a two-minute conversation with somebody, and you're like, wow, I feel all better now. Everything's different. Everything, I feel so good. Like, I feel like this weight's been taken off my back is because God sometimes speaks through people to you. God speaks through people to you, speaks wisdom. When trouble comes, we need to go to him. We don't need to just go to the internet. We need to go to him. We need to come together as a church, as a family, as a community, and actually rely on each other when things get hard. You know, that's part of the point of us here as a church is to come together as a family and celebrate, as, as celebrate with those who are celebrating and mourn with those who are mourning. Come together as a family and speak wisdom and speak life into one another and if you're new to the bible maybe maybe you haven't read much of the bible i want to encourage you, if you want to grow in wisdom there's this book in the bible called proverbs and proverbs is just an incredible book filled with wisdom filled with 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 so much wisdom on like every area of life and i want to encourage you what's interesting about proverbs is that there's 31 chapters in proverbs and oftentimes there's 31 days in a day not always right but 31 days in a day i want to encourage you starting in june june 1st Let's just read a proverb a day. Boom. One proverb every single day. It doesn't take that long. If you want to grow in wisdom, that's an incredible way to grow in wisdom because it's filled with so much wisdom. And I believe God can speak to us through proverbs that were written thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. Jesus wants to speak to you, but we have to become disciplined in the art of listening to become disciplined in actually listening to his voice, the still small voice that's speaking even right now to you. Jesus is knocking, and the interest, uh, we need to think, are we willing to answer the door? Are we willing to actually answer the door? Or are we too preoccupied with everything else that's going on in our life? Are we willing to open the door, let him into our home, let him into our vulnerable places to let them into our brokenness to let them into our messy oftentimes dirty house and say hey like i need you are we willing to open the door and let him speak life into you you know listening and quiet are often so hard for us right we're, we're like i said like we're so accustomed to noise that quiet oftentimes is challenging Jesus is knocking, and we need to be listening for the knock. If there's too much going on and too much noise, you might not even hear the knock on the door. And what this means is that there might be things in our life that we need to cut out. There might be things in our life that we need to say, okay, I'm not going to be doing this anymore because this is taking up too much of my time, and I'm not spending enough time with my Father. Well, maybe there's something in your life. What is something in your life that you, maybe you need to cut out so that way you can create more space for intimate relationship with Jesus? Let us spend some time listening to Jesus this week. Let's not rush through our devotional times. Let's create even more space for time with Jesus because we know we need it. We know we need it. We know we need more time with Jesus. It's time maybe to cut something out. You know, when it comes to prayer, I just want to encourage all of us. It's something, I shared this last week, but it's something we can all get better at. It's something that we can all improve, and we can all improve in listening to him speak. We can all get better. We can all learn to listen better. I want to encourage you, let's all do that this week. I don't know where you are in your faith journey. I don't know where you are in your prayer journey. But you can get better. You can improve. You can learn to love prayer time. You can learn to love the quiet. You can learn to love the solitude. You can learn to love it. It takes time. It takes effort. But we can learn to love it. You know, we're going to sing one last song together uh, here today, this morning. It's called The Blessing. I think, you know, a lot of us, we know it. And it's beautiful. I love this song because it's singing a song of a, of a blessing that God's speaking to us. You know, it's God, he's saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. 
And I just love that. That this year, God has been blessing us and keeping us. God has been protecting us. God has been there. And anything you've gone through, in every hardship, in every moment that has just been so, so, so hard. Something that maybe you haven't even had the opportunity to share with somebody because you're still so broken about it. God has been there with you. God has been there with you. His, his, his face will shine upon you. So I'm going to pray and then Martin's going to sing uh, one last song for us today. And then Beth's going to come and close our service. But God, I thank you that you're here. God, I pray that this week you will show us how to listen better. You will teach us how to listen more and, and hear your still, small voice. God, I pray that we will learn to love the quiet. We will learn to hear you speaking. God, I thank you that today you will bless us, you will keep us, and you'll make your face shine upon us. God, I thank you for everyone in this parking lot. I thank you for everyone watching online. God, I thank you that they're a part of this beautiful this beautiful family, this beautiful church. And God, I thank you that as we move into the future, as we step into the new that you have for us as a church, as a family, God, I thank you that you're moving. You're moving in our homes. You're moving in our families. You're, you're, you're moving in our in, inside of every one of us. And God, I thank you that as we get out of COVID, I thank you that revival's coming. God, we pray for our city right now. The city we're just in the midst of in this moment. God, I pray for our city, Edmonton. God, right now, we just pray for our city, those people who are struggling so deeply right now. Those people that they don't feel like they have anywhere to go. They don't feel that there's a future for them. They don't feel purpose. They don't feel anything left. God, I specifically pray for our friends right now in our city who are struggling with, with whether or not they should take their life. God, we know that right now mental health is so poor for a lot of people. And God, we just pray for our brothers. We pray for our sisters right now who are struggling deeply with this. God, I pray that you will bless them. You will keep them. And God, I thank you that our church, Victory Church on the Rock, is a light in the darkness. And God, I pray that as we walk as individuals, as we walk as a church into the darkness, God, I thank you that your light will shine. God, that your power will run through us. And God, I thank you that revival is coming and we're excited for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name,